Hey everyone, before I get into this video, I gotta remind you of a couple giveaways we have going on right now. One of them is for a Nintendo Switch, an Xbox Series X, or a PlayStation 5. The other is for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. You can like this video, comment on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, head down to the description, be sure to check out uh, how to enter these giveaways. Alright, let's get into this because uh, we have a, a, a quite a bit to talk about here because there is a, kind of a... a <sighs> I guess an opinion going out there, kind of a, a a thought process, I guess is the best way to put it, that Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are rushing to launch this year. And what supports it is things like how there's no major games for the Xbox Series X and Series S at launch, uh, Sony not being forthcoming in a whole bunch of features that we normally know by now, uh, and yeah, it's a weird pandemic year, and it kind of feels like maybe... Uh, you know, they shouldn't have these systems out there. There's obviously a lot of pre-order snafus, uh, pre-order cancellations and delays. I mean, the PlayStation 5, some people are getting emails about their PlayStation 5 pre-orders saying you won't even get your system till 2021. Like that doesn't even sound like second shipment, third shipment, fourth shipment. That sounds like 10 shipments down the road. You finally get your PlayStation 5 pre-order. That's, that's really insane to be completely honest. And a lot of this has led to confusion and people are just saying you know what these systems are rushed they shouldn't be launching now and i want to be clear here we will not know how rushed these systems are until they're actually in our hands and there are certain aspects about these platforms that uh, will point out how rushed they really are but right now from the outside looking in you know you look at the lineups you, you look at uh, how all the handling of this has been happening it looks like these systems are rushed but I think one thing that's important to do is look at the history of console launches. Because if you're going to claim that these console launches are rushed, then we need a basis to compare it to. Now, we could compare this to Nintendo Switch. We all know that Switch launched with a killer app. We all know uh, that Switch had hardware issues. And for all intents and purposes, it kind of feels like Switch was rushed in hindsight, even though the Switch blew up. And no one is saying they shouldn't have released it on March 3rd, 2017. But there are some things that maybe could have been fixed if the Switch sat in the oven at least till holidays. It is what it is. Now, let's get into actually comparing other Xbox and PlayStation launches. So I decided to first look at the one thing we know for sure that we can check, and that is launch lineups. So for the Xbox 360, we're, we're, we're going to start there because that's like the first console that Microsoft really uh, came on the scenes and, 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 and made a name for themselves. Yes, I know the original Xbox with Halo and everything was a big deal. But again, uh, they were just breaking into the video game market. This is their second attempt. Uh, and their launch lineup is a, a decent lengthy list. You know, you get Amped 3, you got Call of Duty 2, you got Condemned Criminal Origins, FIFA Soccer 06, uh, Gun, uh, Cameo, Elements of Power. Uh, that, was a, that was an exclusive game at the time, one of the exclusive launch games. Uh, Madden NFL 06, NBA 2K6, NBA Live 06, Need for Speed Most Wanted, NHL 2K6, Perfect Dark Zero, Microsoft Game Studios uh, with Perfect Dark Zero there. Again, that is another um, you know quote-unquote exclusive game there. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie by Ubisoft. Project Gotham Racing 3, which was another exclusive at the time. Quake 4 by id software and activision we had ridge racer 6 tiger woods pga tour 06 and tony hawks america Wasted. so basically a ton of sports games a couple uh other ones a couple shooters and then we had some exclusives all right not no, no big names in there right no big name exclusives um but you know a decent list you got about 20 or so games there uh then you look at the playstation 3 launch lineup because again we're going to kind of compare uh just going back a couple of gens here uh, they had about 21 games, it looks like. So they had Resistance Fall of Man. That was an exclusive game. NBA 07. Genji Days of Blade. Uh, Blazing Angels Squadrons of World War II. Call of Duty 3. EA Sports Fight Night Round 3. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Fear. Uh, Full Auto 2 Battle Lines. Madden NFL 07. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh, Mobile Sweet Gundam Crossfire. NBA 2K7. Uh, Need for Speed Carbon, NHL 2K7, Ridge Racer 7, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tiger Woods, PGA 207, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas, uh, Tony Hawk's Project 8, and Untold Legends of Dark Kingdom. Now, there's some good games in there, of course, but Sony themselves didn't really provide a lot of the, the best games. I mean, you're thinking about Oblivion, you're thinking, you know, about games like, uh, you know, geez, I'm even looking at this, Marvel Ultimate Alliance was actually pretty decent, but Sony really didn't have anything to do with that. Their, their big games were obviously Resistance. Fall of Man, 
Genji, Days of Blade. Like that was their, their go-to games. Neither of them really that big of a deal. Um, and kind of showing that the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 didn't exactly have great launch lineups. So let's go to the current generation, the PlayStation 4. So the PlayStation 4 launch lineup was, again, about 21 games. Again, the most recent generation. Let's just take a look at it. Angry Birds, Star Wars, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Battlefield 4, Blacklight Retribution, Call of Duty Ghost, Contrast, DC Universe Online, Drivekick, FIFA 14, Flower, Injustice, Gods Among Us, uh, Just Dance 2014, Killzone, Shadowfall, that was the big PlayStation 4 exclusive at the time, Knack, that was another one, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Madden 25, NFL 2K14, NBA Live, 14, Need for Speed Rivals, Playroom, uh, another Sony uh, exclusive, Riso Gun, uh, Skylander Swap Force, Sound Shapes, Super Motherland, Trying to the Complete Story, and Warframe. And it's funny because it's almost like Riso Gun was kind of like the one that people were really, really excited about. It was it was on PlayStation Plus. You can get it uh, for free if you were already a subscriber. Uh, but yeah, that was, you know, again, not a terrible lineup. But there's nothing in there that really jumps out to you, right? Like at least, at least to me, there's nothing really, you know, that jumps out. Because I mean, if you, if you go over and you look at the Xbox One launch lineup, it doesn't really sound worse. You have Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Ghost, Crimson Dragon, Dead Rising 3, FIFA 14, Fighter Within, Forza, Motorsport 5, Just Dance 2014, Killer Instinct, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Loco Cycle, Madden 25, NBA 2K14, NBA Live, Need for Speed Rivals, Power, Rise, Rise, uh, Rise Sun of Rome. That was an exclusive. Skylander, Swap Force, Zoo Tycoon. Uh, Zumba Fitness World Party. Again, nothing really major there. I mean, it was like basically what? Kill Zone versus Rise Sun of Rome. Otherwise, a lot of this, a lot of very similar games in those lineups. I mean, these aren't really impressive um, lineups, but it does sound better, of course, when you start looking at what do they have coming this year. And this is where this generation's a little bit weird. So on November 10th, the Xbox Series X. We'll have Assassin's Creed Valhalla launching that same day. Literally, they moved up the launch date to, to match the Series X launch. There will be Destiny 2 Beyond Light, Dirt 5, Gears Tactics, which is like the exclusive game that they have because um, they don't have any big exclusives uh, at launch. Now that Halo's pushed back, so it's Gears Tactics, Tetris Effect Connect, Watch Dogs Legion, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Now, one thing you'll notice is it sounds like a lot less games. But things are different now. Because these systems are fully backwards compatible, you don't need a Madden 21 launch title. Because if you own Madden 21 on things like Xbox, you just put it into the system. And it'll have free updates and stuff for next gen. So reality is the launch lineups are going to be smaller this time around. But that doesn't mean there's actually less available games. In fact, due to backwards compatibility of both platforms, at least to, to, to last gen, for all gens for, for Xbox... You actually start with a massive library at launch, bigger than we've ever had. But these are the six games that basically are coming to Xbox Series X day one that you can't really enjoy fully right now, at least not in the same way you can on Xbox. PlayStation 5 is where, uh, you know, you start to see a few interesting things. So, yes, they have... You know, some similar games, uh, you know, with Assassin's Creed and everything. But Spider-Man Miles Morales, that's an exclusive. Astro's Playroom, uh, Sackboy A Big Adventure, uh, and Demon Souls. Those are like the big ones. So Sony's offering, maybe, arguably, Sony's offering the best exclusive launch lineup they have offered maybe in the history of the company. Um, and then you get into Godfall uh, is a launch game. Watch Dogs Legions, again, Dirt 5, Call of Duty, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. Um, it's going to be there at PlayStation 5 on launch. Uh, we don't know if that's coming to Xbox yet. Uh, it's definitely not coming at launch. Um, there's going to be Fortnite there at launch. Fortnite's going to be on everything. Um, Destruction All-Stars. So, Sony doesn't have a ton of games coming either. But again, because of backwards compatibility, there's actually a bunch of games you can play on PlayStation 5 Day 1. You can pretty much pick up any PlayStation 4 game you want and play it. Same for the Xbox. So like when you buy an Xbox One X at launch, if there's another game coming out this holiday you want that's coming to Xbox, it, it plays on the Series X. So you actually have a lot more gaming options this time around. So this makes the launch lineups really, really focus more on the exclusives than on anything else. And exclusive-wise, clearly Sony has maybe the best launch lineup they've had. So if it's such a rushed launch for PlayStation 5, then why does it have so many decent exclusives? Why is there Demon's Souls Remake? 
Why are we having Miles Morales? Why are we why are we having Astros Playroom or Sackboy a big like this is a pretty solid exclusive lineup. So this is where we actually get into the honest conversation about what makes a system rushed. Because I don't think game lineup really has much to do with it. Games are going to come, games are going to go. As we looked at all the launch lineups for prior systems, exclusive wise, it really wasn't that great for either platform, for Sony or Microsoft. This is the first generation where Sony actually has a couple decent games at launch. You know, Miles Morales, which is also cross gen, by the way. We can't just ignore that. It's cross gen. So, what makes these systems launched or, or, or rushed? Well, these are things we have yet to be determined. So, What's going to determine if the systems are launched or, or rushed, not launched, rushed, is one, hardware failure. Are we going to have another red ring of death situation? Are we going to have, um, you know, another like PlayStation 4 where the controllers, where, where the, the plastic was cracking on the thumbsticks? Are we going to have another situation like that that could have been easily caught in more quality testing if they had let the system bake for longer? Um, are we going to run into operating system bugs and issues uh, that would have been ironed out if these systems spent more time in development? Are we going to run into heat problems with the platforms? Are they going to overheat? Are they going to draw too much power, more power than they're supposed to because there's something wrong in the power supply? Uh, are we going to run into issues where the systems are crashing all the time? These are things that to me determine if a, a system is actually rushed. Like when you get a brand new latest GPU graphics card. And this happened, I think, back with the Vega 7s uh, from AMD. The reason you know that was a rushed launch is when those GPUs came out and you bought it, the drivers were so poorly done for that GPU that most of your games just wouldn't run on it at launch. It was insane. That lets you know that, hey, look, even if the hard technology part's ready, the software side is not. So don't release it. Give time. Bake your drivers a little more so things work better. And they didn't do that. And that's kind of what I'm getting into with the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, the PlayStation 5, and the PlayStation 5 all digital version. Is we can't talk about them being rushed yet. We can't. Because the things that determine if these platforms are rushed are things we can't determine until the systems are in the public's hands. Now, we could talk about supply and demand and not meeting supply and demand. But I actually went back they did research on this. Did you know that every new generation console, even the Dreamcast, for crying out loud, sold out at launch? I'm not sure if you guys knew that. Um, whether it was the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, 4, it doesn't matter. Nintendo systems, you know, N64, GameCube, Wii, even the Wii U. All of these platforms sold out at launch. All of you know, when if online pre-orders were available, all sold out within an hour, and in-store sold out as well when they were supposed to. Yes, maybe things are a little crazier now because more people are trying to buy online than ever due to COVID, but, I mean, we need to sit back and look at this realistically. And that is that every new launch sells out. Every new launch does not have enough supply to meet demand in the video game console space. So what does this mean? What can we do about it? nothing we have to wait okay you could still hold on to that opinion that these systems are rushed i just don't think the evidence supports it i think the evidence shows that determine a rush system cannot be determined until the system is in our hands a rushed product has flaws a rushed product has issues a rushed product isn't we can't make enough to meet demand a rush product isn't oh my gosh there's not enough launch games for the platform that th that doesn't matter in the grand scheme we see with prior launch lineups and and prior hardware issues that you know what that stuff isn't as relevant when you look at the launch lineups we've seen terrible launch lineups from other it's like rushed compared to what exactly is there a platform you feel like launched perfectly i mean be honest with me is there a platform that launched perfectly this is why there's always been this mentality of Early adopters deal with early adopter problems. One of those problems being not a ton of exclusive games to play uh, and oftentimes some hardware failures. You know, a big thing when the Switch launched was left Joy-Con connectivity issues. Forget all the other issues. There was a, a legitimate issue Nintendo did fix with left Joy-Con connectivity. So, like, these are problems that seem to always exist in new platforms. So rush compared to what? Again, we can't determine how rushed these platforms are until they're in our hands. For all we know, 
there is nothing wrong with these systems. The games are going to keep coming consistently. And you know what? Your determination if you want it day one or not might just come down to whether you can get it, whether you can get your hands on it. And if you can't, oh well, they'll eventually be able to buy sometime next year. You'll be able to walk into a store and get one. Uh, you'll be able to walk into a store and get one sometime this year too if you're really diligent. So I'm not, I'm honestly not that concerned about these platforms being rushed. The things that concern me the most are just consumer practices. I, I've covered it a lot between Xbox and, and PlayStation 5. You know, the, the different consumer practices they're doing, the, the forthrightness and the honesty from one company versus the, yeah, we'll tell you some things, but we're going to tell you it kind of in a hodgepodge way so, like, the whole general public doesn't really hear about it in the best possible way. Um, it, it's, it's just a lot of um, different approaches to the market. Both are going to be successful this holiday. The question is, which one is going to be successful long haul? And can they both be successful? And can Switch also thrive in the same market? I think it's entirely possible we might be entering the first generation where three different platforms could actually be thriving at the same time. Uh, I do firmly believe, if you're just going to like, you know, force me to pick right now, PlayStation 5 will outsell uh, the Xbox Series X at launch because it does look like there are more PlayStation 5 stock available. Uh, and PlayStation 5 will outsell the Xbox you know, long haul. But I do think there are going to be some key markets where Xbox is going to have a massive foothold. I think right here in the United States, my home country, I think there's a chance Xbox Series X and S might outsell PlayStation 5 in this country. Not worldwide. Worldwide is totally different. But again, in Switch, Nintendo is going to keep dominating with Switch. They're going to re release a revision. They're going to do a new generation here in a few years. Like, hold on tight. It's actually a really exciting, great time to be a gamer. I will note the one, the one downfall of next gen that maybe isn't talked about enough is it's going to be the most expensive generation ever games jump into 70 bucks storage costing costing you know 200 dollars plus for an extra terabyte it's going to be the most expensive generation yet but i always note this about video games in general video games as a hobby video games as something to do for fun has always been expensive it's an expensive hobby. It's an expensive thing. Even, you know, you think about the 3DS. Oh, you buy it for, for 200 bucks. Well, the games are still 40 bucks a pop. It's pretty pricey, you know, like in comparison to the cost of the system. So I, I just have to throw out there that, you know what? Um, video games is just an expensive hobby, and I kind of accepted that a long time ago. All right, folks. I am Nintendo Robo Jans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.